After learning how to do implicit differentiation, a natural next step is to try finding the equation of a tangent line to a curve that is described by an equation like this, where y is not explicitly solved for x. So in order to find the tangent line, well of course we'll need to know the slope, and to know the slope we're going to have to use implicit differentiation. So in this problem we're asked to find the tangent to the ellipse described by the equation x squared minus xy plus y squared equals 7. And we want to find this tangent at the point negative 1, 2. Of course, we need a whole point now to specify where the tangent is going to be. Just an x-coordinate is not sufficient because negative 1 happens at this point and at this point. But we, of course, are looking for negative 1, 2. So that's right there, and the tangent we're looking for looks something like that. Typically, to find a tangent line, we'd only be given an x-coordinate, and so we'd have to plug that into our function to figure out what the actual point of tangency is. So it's kind of nice in this case that we don't have to do that step since we already have the point. So we already know from the jump that our tangent line is going to look like this. y minus 2 equals the slope multiplied by x minus negative 1. This is just point slope form for a line using this point. All right, so then all that really remains is for us to find m, the slope at this point. So we'll have to do implicit differentiation on this equation. To begin that process, we take the derivative of the left side of the equation and the derivative of the right side of the equation. So let's go ahead and proceed with this computation. The derivative of x squared, that's just power rule, that's 2x. Then we have x times y. And remember that y is some implicit function of x. So here we have a function, x, times another function, y, we need to use the product rule. The product rule tells us that the derivative of xy will be f prime g. We'll say that f is x and g is y. So f prime g is just the derivative of x, which is 1, times g, which is y. Notice as well that I'm leaving this minus out here, and I've just opened up the parentheses for the derivative. This is just to be careful and make sure that I don't make any sign errors. So this is f prime g. Then we need to add, again we're still in the product rule, we need to add g prime f. g is y, so g prime is the derivative of y. We're differentiating with respect to x, so that's just dy dx. Remember when you're doing implicit differentiation, you're always going to get a dy dx when you take the derivative of a y term. Here it is in this example. So we've got g prime, that's dy dx, times f. So then we have to multiply by x. Then we can close these parentheses. That's the derivative of xy. We can move on then to the derivative of y squared. The first step of this is just power rule, so it's 2 times y. But then, because this is a y function, we need to hit it with the dy dx factor, because we've got this sort of implicit chain rule going on. Yes, we have y squared, but also y is an implicit function of x, so we then need to multiply by the derivative of that inside y function, giving us dy dx. On the right, the derivative of 7 is just 0. The derivative of a constant is always 0. Now we're almost done. All we've got left is to solve for dy dx. First, I'm just going to reassemble the pieces of this equation. Let's bring the dy dx terms together and bring everything else together as well. So first, I'll put this 2y dy dx. That's at the front of our equation. And then the only other dy dx term we have comes from this minus times dy dx times x. So that's minus dy dx times x. Then we've got this 2x, so we'll add 2x, 
and we've got this minus y, so subtract y, and this all equals zero. Now, we can factor dy dx out of these first two terms and move these other two terms to the other side of the equation. So when I factor dy dx out of the front two terms, I'll be left with 2y minus x minus x. You can see if we distribute this through the parentheses, we'll end up back where we started. Then these two characters, I'm moving to the other side of the equation. So minus y gets added to the other side, plus 2x gets subtracted from the other side. Now all that's left is to divide both sides by 2y minus x. Then we'll have dy dx all by itself. And that completes the implicit differentiation process. Now we can use this derivative to finally find that slope m of our tangent line. Remember, we're looking for the line to be tangent at the point negative 1, 2. So we need its slope to match the slope of the ellipse at negative 1, 2. So we'll just go ahead and plug negative 1, 2 into the derivative. So I'll write m equals negative 1, 2, let me just write it over here so we don't forget. We need to plug negative 1 into the x's and plug 2 into the y's. So that's going to leave us with, let me uncircle that 2, plug 2 into the y's, so we'll have 2 minus 2 times x is negative 1, and then divide by 2 times y, so that's 2 times 2 minus x, so that's minus negative 1. This is 2 plus 2 in the numerator, which is 4, divided by 2 times 2 plus 1, or 4 plus 1, or 5 in the denominator, and we could just rewrite that as 0 0.8. Now we can finish writing the equation for the tangent. Let's finish our work over in this corner. We just figured out that m is equal to 0 0.8. Let's add 2 to both sides and distribute. That's going to give us y equals m is 0.8. So we've got 0.8x, and then we would have m multiplied by positive 1. So that's going to be plus 0.8, and then we added 2 to both sides. So we got to get that plus 2. And finally, the equation for our tangent line is y equals 0.8x plus 2.8 eight, which agrees more or less with our sketch. That's how you find the line tangent to a curve using implicit differentiation. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Oh, and sorry I accidentally moved the sketch without moving that line's arrowhead. I'll just put that back where it was supposed to go. See ya. Sphere come